everyone, this is uh, lesson seven. We're going to be talking about the exposure triangle, ISO, um, shutter speed, and aperture, of course. Aperture is the most difficult thing for most people to understand. I'm sorry in this lesson, but uh, it goes on and on, and I repeat and I repeat just to try and get it in there. Now, you don't want to buy a nice DSLR and drive it on automatic. You want to be creative with it. You want to be able to change that gear stick. You want to do this with it. Have good fun. Well, the only way you can do it with a DSLR, get that extra creativity, is knowing what I'm going to show you now. It's a very, very important lesson. And I'm sorry it goes on and on, but anyway. On. We'll teach you how to use the camera on semi-automatic. So we'll go halfway to manual. It's actually the setting I use most of the time. But firstly, you have to understand three things. Shutter speed, aperture, and the other part of the triangle, the exposure triangle, is ISO. Now, shutter speed is simple enough, isn't it? I mean, we all know that. It's how fast the shutter comes down, the image. And that, of course, if it's very fast, will stop dead a moving subject. And if it's very slow, you'll get a nice movement in the picture. Well, let's have a look at a shutter in an old uh, film camera. And then we can see exactly what the situation is. If I fire it, you'll see it opens and closes. Now, as I adjust the exposure faster, of course, less light is getting through the camera. For example, a 500th of a second is like that, much, much quicker. Have another look at that. That's just a quick flash. As I said, on the digital it works in the opposite direction. What about aperture? Well, aperture is this. It's a hole in the lens. Let's hold that up so you can see it. Uh, it's a hole in the lens that opens and closes. Now, of course, your DSLR will do this automatically. This is off an old camera, uh, an old uh, film camera. It opens and closes. Now, what's the aim of that? Well, the aim of that is very simple, and that's to adjust the amount of light that's coming through the camera. The smaller the hole, of course, the less light is coming through. Well, if less light is coming through, it's obvious that the shutter speed is going to have to be slower to compensate. And that's basically the, the whole thing between aperture and shutter speed. One is relative to the other. One is wide open. If the aperture is wide open, a lot of light is coming through. Then the shutter speed, of course, will be a lot faster. So you can play with those two to compensate and all those will give you a different result. But we have a complication. If you're familiar with older, older cameras, film cameras, of course it's very simple. You just, uh, there was uh, ISO or ASA. Now what were they? They were the amount, the f how, how sensitive the film was uh, to light. And it's the same thing in a DSLR. We can adjust the sensitivity of our sensor. Now, you might think, yeah, that's great. OK, I want it the most sensitive. That way I can take pictures when it's very dark, which you can. But unfortunately, the higher the ISO, the less the quality of the image. So now we have a third thing for the exposure, and that's the end of the triangle. I'll try and explain with a graph this a bit later on. But if you need more light in the camera because you don't have enough light to have a fast shutter speed or enough light to close the diaphragm, or the aperture, then you have to increase the ISO. So you have these three things. One, two three things that will balance the exposure. And now once you've understood this,
photography becomes very easy. This is the only real eek, if you like, uh, difficult bit of understanding using a DSLR on manual. So it's a very important lesson. We'll have a little look in the camera, see what the F number looks like. The F number is the aperture. And as you see, as I turn the button, the F number gets higher. As it gets higher, the hole in the camera or the aperture in the camera gets smaller. The higher the number, the smaller the hole. This lens goes up to F22. And of course, it goes the other way. It goes right down to 1.8, which, of course, is allowing more light through the lens because the aperture is a lot bigger. So let's have a look at uh, aperture. We'll leave for the moment the ISO. We'll just use aperture and shutter speed for this. Now aperture, see it in front of you, it is sometimes called f-stop. Um, in fact, I think most people refer to it as an f-stop. So if you see it, someone talking about f-stop, they mean aperture, or aperture, they mean f-stop. Now let's have a look at the main apertures. Now this is complicated, and I don't, well, I do know why it's done like this, but um, I'm not going to get into all the techniques and the physics of why these are the f-stops. It's 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, and 22, and it can go to 32, 64. So those are the major well-known f-stops. The problem is on your camera, you will have 2.8 and a third, 2.8 and a half, 2.8 and three quarters, but you must, in your mind, start thinking about these numbers. Some lenses will go to 32 and some other lenses will go down to 1.2. Now those of course always have an F in front of them, as I said, F2.8, F4, F5.6, etc. And those are the major F numbers. Now if we add the shutter speeds, now this is an example of a standard light, let's say, on a nice sunny day, the exposure will be f8 at 250th of a second. Let's go right up to the end of the scale and we go to f22. Now f22 the light is a 30th f22 the light is a 30th of a second. Now that would be a bright sunny day. Now how do you know that? Your camera will tell you. We'll go into all that later. Now if I open the f-stop to f16 then the shutter speed is going to have to be faster because f16 is letting more light through the lens and we have to stop that light by using the shutter at a faster speed now you see i've halved it 30th to a 60th so i hope that's clear now People use the expression, you'll hear them use it, will be 2.8 at 2 thousandths. 16, F16 at a 60th. So that's how people express what f-stop and what shutter speed they're using. But there is a byproduct of the aperture. It's a bit like when you squint your eyes. When you squint your eyes, you tend to see more. And if you're trying to see something really in focus, you squint your eyes a little bit. Well, it's the same with the aperture. The, the lower the aperture, the wider, rather, the wider the aperture in the lens, which is 2.8 in most cases, you get a low depth of field. Now, what's depth of field? Depth of the field is the amount of what you see that's in focus. And then as we go up to f22, because we're squinting through the lens through a very small hole, it allows more to be in focus. Now that's the byproduct of f-stops, but we'll deal with that in another lesson. Now firstly, I'm taking this quite slowly uh, because it is important and I want you to understand. 
What's important to know is that an f-stop, when it changes from one full stop to another, a full stop to another, so that means f8 to f11, or in f11 to f16, those are full stops. All those numbers are full stops. When it changes from one to the other, it's double the amount of light, or half the amount of light, depending which way you're changing. So f8 to f11, as the hole's getting smaller, it would be half the amount of light. That's the important thing. So when we talk about an f-stop and changing full f-stops, we're doubling or halving the amount of light. Exactly the same thing as if we change from a thirtieth of a second to a sixtieth of a second, we double, sorry, we halve the amount of light. And if we change from a thirtieth to a fifteenth, we double the amount of light. Now, I think I might have a better way of explaining it, so we'll have a quick look. Now, I'd like you to think about light, so like a matchstick, how much, light, how much light comes off a matchstick. Imagine we have f2.8 with one matchstick. Now, you see there's a matchstick just under it. And we go to f4, of course, we've got two matchsticks. Then, four matchsticks at 5.6. 8 at f8, 16 at f11, 32 at f16, and 64 matchsticks at f22. Well, of course, all that is quite important. We need 64 times the amount of light if we're at f22 than f2.8. Well, now we see the point of buying lenses that open up to 1.4 or 1.2 because that's going to be, I mean, 128 times the amount of light or even more. So, you see how important all this is? Well, I think that's going to be enough for this lesson and I'll get straight on to one where we add ISO into the, into the calculation. Uh, it's quite a long film, this one, and maybe the next one will be as well. So... Cheers, and I'll see you in lesson eight very quickly.